effective. Now we go to petition with the number 204 of this year by Evelyn van den Brieck, Dutch, on a request for funding for biometrical research on malgic encephalomyelitis in the presence of the petitioner and thanks to the petitioner and all those who have provided possibility for us to speak to you and to hear about your concerns uh, in direct evidence, not only in writing. So floor is to petitioner. How do we arrange the micro? Is it okay? Which language uh, do you have a microphone? Please. Don't worry, don't worry, have your time, no problem. Help us. President Montserrat, okay. members of the Committee on Petitions, thank you very much for your invitation. Um, I'm honored to be here. I would also like to thank uh, Francis Martin for his brilliant help and support, Emmy Action, Ben and Espe in particular, my parents and the Red Cross. I'm grateful to everyone who supported the petition and helped to make this a success. The fact that I'm here is a miracle in itself. For years, I was unable to speak or get out of bed. Despite the severe limitations that I still have today, I'm very glad to be alive. I survived. Not all patients are this lucky. We have lost some wonderful members of our community to this disease. The disease is sometimes called invisible. This is true to some extent. Chronic diseases can be quite invisible to outsiders. But with ME, this is only up to a certain level. At that point, it becomes very visible. The disease has been described as a living death. This is Whitney Davo, the son of Janet Davo and Ronald Davis, professor of biochemistry and genetics at Stanford University, a renowned scientist who was involved in the Human Genome Project. Okay. Um, he has been working tirelessly to cure his son's disease. This is Alison Hunter. She was a vibrant girl full of life. She was only 14 years old when she died of complications of ME. This is Mark Fink. He was a doctor who ran marathons. Now, walking to the bathroom is harder than any marathon he ever ran. This is me at one of the worst moments. I've been sick for more than 20 years. This is me as a child. I cherish the memory of my healthy life. Once I rode an unsettled horse. 
In this grade of severity, ME is only invisible if people purposefully look away. And this is what has happened. Patients have suffered in silence. The fact that the cause of the disease isn't understood and there is no diagnostic test has created a terrible stigma. Almost all of us have at least once heard the empty phrase, it must be all in your head. ME patients have been treated shamefully because of misconceptions and the terribly inadequate funding that hampered scientific progress. Cancer was once thought to be caused by the suppression of bad thoughts. MS was called hysterical paralysis and AIDS was believed to be caused by the stress of being gay. Thankfully, times have changed. This change was made possible by science, not silence. And that's why I'm here today, to ask you to fund biomedical research on ME. We need to be able to diagnose this disease as soon as possible and make sure patients get access to biomedical treatments. Scientists have made a lot of progress in the past few years, thanks to private funding and public funding that was made available in the United States by the NIH. The major US universities have special research groups. There are clear findings and a clear path forward. I am convinced that we, as Europeans, can do much more to solve this neglected disease. We have brilliant scientists eager to get to work, but they need funding. This will take a long-term commitment with structural, equitable funding and a comprehensive strategy. This is not just an ethical and humanitarian question, it will also have a positive economic impact if patients can recover their health and they and their caregivers can go back to work. I have faith in Europe and our common values of equality, justice and fair chances. I'm absolutely sure that we can make a substantial contribution to solving ME if we put our minds to it. On behalf of all patients, I'm asking you, please don't look away. We are here and today we have made ourselves visible. Please help us to get back to our lives. With hope and determination, we can solve this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evelyn. <laughs> and you really did the problem visible and thank you once more for this. So we, according to our procedure, we, we give the floor to a representative of the commission. It is Karim Berkuk. Please, Mr. Berkuk. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Ms. Vandenbrick, for this uh, moving testimony. Um, I, I will a bit repeat what, uh, what uh, I said before. We don't have specific uh, disease. Uh, we, we, we don't focus on disease. We have open challenges, and, um, and researchers can provide a solution uh, to, to the challenge. For instance, last week we had a topic, which is new intervention for chronic diseases. And that's exactly where such a research uh, could take place. Um, maybe what um, we are not doing enough is stimulate those researchers and uh, push them to, to apply a bit more. Uh, I hear sometime, and it was mentioned, that um, the small diseases between uh, quotes um, um, are not evaluated uh, as well as um, the other big diseases. But I have to say that uh, when, we do the, when we carry out the evaluation, we really mention that what matters is uh, the impact within the diseases, uh, within the disease and not across the disease. So if there is a game changer in uh, ME, for instance, it will be given the priority compared to another um, big disease such, such as cancer. Um, so maybe my, um, my answer would be, uh, okay, how we can find ways to stimulate a bit more the researchers to apply. 
I know that they were a bit put off at the beginning of uh, Horizon 2020 because the success rate was extremely low. Uh, we had had score with a 2-3% uh, success rate, so lots of frustration. Uh, but towards the end of uh, Horizon 2020, um, the success rate is, is getting uh, better, uh, closer to the 20%, so I hope um, that uh, there will be more opportunities. And uh, just a point on the comparison with the NIH, um, the National Institute of Health in the, in the US, uh, yes, they are, they are doing a lot, but I think they, they have a budget which is uh, 30 times be, bigger than what we have at the Commission. Uh, they have something like 30 billion a year. We, we, we run with about a, a billion a year. So, of course, they have a better means. But I also remind that 95% of the public fund, uh, research public fund in, in the EU, uh, come from the member states. Only 5% is managed by the, the Commission. So that's where I think we should also uh, stimulate coordination of uh, national uh, research resources. Thanks. Uh, there were requests for the floor from colleagues. Uh, could you, Mr. Palmer, please? Thank you very much. And can I firstly uh, thank the petitioner for that incredibly powerful uh, testimony in support of the petition? You've not just uh, made ME patients visible this morning, you made ME patients powerfully heard in the European Parliament today. And I know ME patients across Europe will be incredibly proud uh, of your contribution uh, this morning. So let me thank you and all those who've supported uh, this petition, including my constituent, Sarah Reid, who has campaigned as an ME patient for uh, many years at huge personal uh, sacrifice as well. Uh, I met earlier this year with the International Alliance for ME, who stand fully behind the calls of this petition uh, for more funding to support biomedical research into ME, which, as we've heard this morning, is a truly devastating condition affecting over 20 million people across the world, uh, many millions here in Europe, but across the world as well. And I think as the petitioner made clear, let's not lose sight of the fact of the European Union's potential and role as a global leader uh, on medical research uh, on conditions such as this. This condition does carry a huge economic cost, but more importantly, that huge personal cost to individuals, their families and their carers. Uh, so this morning, I want to reinforce what many of my constituents have said to me and have asked me to do to make representations to the Commission to find that funding, that specific funding, to support the biomedical research we need to see. Firstly, for biomedical diagnostic testing for ME, which is accurate, reliable and recognised, but also that research to drive forward effective treatments for ME uh, as well. And I do ask the Commission perhaps to be a little bit more precise uh, than stimulating researchers to come forward. Let's put in place some specific funding to research this condition because the reality is this, ME is often misunderstood. It's therefore often misdiagnosed or not, not diagnosed at all. And what that leads to, that misunderstanding and that misdiagnosis ultimately leads to some incredibly difficult misplaced assumptions and stigma affecting, the, affecting uh, people suffering with this condition. I was very encouraged earlier this week at the uh, hearing for the Commissioner-designate for Health, who spoke very positively, very ambitiously uh, about the public health agenda of the European Union going forward. So I think there is a strong and emerging consensus across the institutions here to find and identify specific funding to support that biomedical research on diagnosis and treatment uh, for ME. So I hope the Petitions Committee this morning will keep this petition open so we can monitor, track and hold accountable the Commission uh, in doing that uh, and that we perhaps in a, a few months' time can perhaps have a more compelling story to tell those people across the European Union and beyond who are looking to this place to do more on this and to remedy the great injustice 
of the underfunding, the incredibly uh, evident underfunding of, uh, of ME research when compared to, to other diseases and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Mr. Bushman, you have asked for the floor, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also to Ms. Frandon Brink for coming here today and making that presentation. I'd like to thank the carers who've made it possible for her to be here at all. I read up a little on the disease prior to this petition. In the case of ME, it's a multi-system a disease with massive consequences on the life of the person affected and we can see that in this instance the precise causes remain unknown according to the information that I have and the symptoms are at least six months of exhaustion weakness pathologically low level of uh, uh, exhaustion and uh, particularly after exertion or loading and uh, big disruptions to sleep, cognitive uh, and recuperative uh, limitations, then there are symptoms that are very similar to influenza, uh, pains, susceptibility to infection, mm -hmm. etc. Now for the person mm -hmm. affected obviously this reduces their quality of life very considerably. 60 to 80 percent of those affected are no longer able to work. Some people require very considerable care. According to the information I have, it has been recognized in the Netherlands and it was on the 1st of October that the Parliament there passed that recognition in the Netherlands. Uh, obviously when it comes to any requests for uh, raising the budget for research, I would be in favor of that and I would ask for the petition to remain open. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. I'll now give the floor back to the petitioner for two minutes to conclude on this point. I would like to thank everyone for their contributions and support. I'm very grateful that you have listened and that it has become clear that the need for change is enormous. This is so important to so many people. I hope this meeting and this historical moment will get a positive follow-up so that change will really take place. Let us turn this hope into deeds into concrete action that will improve the lives of many. Thank you very much. I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. You have set out your petition clearly. Having listened to you and heard from the Commission and the different political groups, we will, of course, keep your petition open and continue to work together on research. We would ask the Commission to keep the Committee on the Petitions abreast of any developments of relevance to your petition, your suffering, your concerns. We will be looking at the upcoming multi-annual financial framework. The different groups will be commenting on the budget earmarked for research, so we will not abandon you. We will work together. The European Commission, the European Parliament, the different political groups will work together to support research. We will not close your petition until we can offer tangible help. Thank you very much for journey, uh, joining us here this morning and we would wish you the very best.